Joining us is Ney San Luin from the Free Rohingya Coalition. He's a coordinator there and from the German city of Frankfurt. And we also have Jahangir Mohammed, the director at the Center for Muslim Affairs from the British city of Manchester. Gentlemen, welcome. Ney San Luin, if I can start with you. Bangladesh says the transfer is being conducted on a volunteer basis and the resort is beautiful. Human rights groups beg to differ. What do you say? Yeah, according to the today, <clears throat> Bangladeshi local media, it is not about the nearly 1,000. It is uh, nearly 2,000. <clears> the exact figure is 1,762 from 428 family. Uh, the Bangladesh government has been saying that uh, they they uh, they are going there voluntarily but uh, according to uh, the 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 cam report uh, being i am a rohingya and the an activist i have contact with the my fellow rohingya brother and sister who are in the bangladeshi camp uh, the ground report uh, do not suggest as bangladeshi government claim uh, most of them were forced by the local authority to go to the Bahasanchar. Today, they were transported to the uh, the port city of the Chittagong. There, they will uh, they they are already there now. Uh, in the morning, uh, they, they will be taken to the Bahasanchar by the naval ship. So, in the first batch, also we have got a lot of report from the uh, ground that most of them were. Uh, you know, uh, forced by the local authority. This is what we heard from the uh, ground, but uh, the completely different with the uh, uh, Bangladesh uh, government report. But there are some people, yes, since the living condition is good in the bus and charter, some are voluntarily going in, but most right. of them possibly. Okay. Now, uh, Jahanga, Bangladesh has not coordinated this mass the transfer of refugees with the UN Refugee Agency. It's a unilateral decision. How concerning is that? Well, I think uh, obviously um, the whole situation is concerning. These people have been refugees uh, for some time and their situation and their plight has not been resolved. So uh, in a way, uh, both the United Nations and the Bangladeshi government uh, and international community are to blame for this uh, and uh, you know it's highly unlikely that uh, uh, people will want to refugees who are poor who don't have resources uh, don't really have free will um, will move from the mainland to an isolated island um, at least on the mainland they can move around and uh, get to other places um, this just uh, basically it's like dumping them in the sea and saying uh, we're just getting rid of this problem uh, and um, you know um, the UN Refu Ag uh, Refugee Agency hasn't done anything really about their plight uh, and uh, the world has just totally forgot about their plight right. and just leaves, leaves them there so uh, there's no solution in sight to this uh, everybody talks about it uh, but the, the no concerted action or uh, plan of action to return them uh, back home or to create the conditions back home for them to be returned or to resettle them permanently elsewhere. Right, so that is the ultimate goal, Jahangir. Ney, Ney San, uh, Luin, the, as Jahangir there says, that's the ultimate goal. But for now, the Rohingya, again, once again, face an uncertain future. Yeah, Myanmar is not uh, creating the condition that uh, met the uh, requirement of the uh, requirement and the demand uh, demand of the Rohingya refugee there in Bangladesh. So uh, since uh, early 2018, uh, uh, the Myanmar has been saying that they will repatriate the the refugee, but in reality, they don't want to take this refugee. That is why, that is the reason. They force these people to flee to Bangladesh. That is clear, you know. They they have been uh, uh, 
persecuting these people since 1978 is more than 42 years. Uh, the international community has been uh, releasing several uh, statements that they are concerned, they are worrying the situation, but they don't really take the action against the perpetrator who have committed the, the gravest international crime of genocide. Still, you know, or the EU, European Union is doing the business with them and the ASEAN country and also the Middle Eastern country. They are still they, doing their business with them, this uh, Myanmar government and the military. So uh, the important is the, the serious action against the, the perpetrator who committed the crime of genocide against the Rohingya people. Then, you know, uh, this, uh, the Myanmar will change their genocidal policy toward the Rohingya people. The, the most important is the internet, the action right. from the international community. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely, uh, it's absolutely, a, dis I mean, it's, it's a disaster. Jahangir, I mean, yeah. after all these civilians, women and children, as uh, Ney was saying, witnessed a genocidal campaign in their homeland, forced to leave en masse, after all the suffering in those so-called uh, refugee camps in Bangladesh, now children have to get on boats and move once again. Have they not suffered enough? Well, they, they uh, have suffered more than enough. Uh, we know what happened to them inside Myanmar. Then they fleed, uh, fled, and uh, many died on the way. Uh, and uh, then they're suffering as refugees, uh, nobody really wants them, uh, and um, now they're being shoved around from island to island. Uh, and uh, meantime, the you know everybody's recognised. It's been documented that a genocide has taken place. Yet there's no action against the perpetrators of the genocide. There's no attempt to make the conditions uh, right for them to return. So if you can't do that, then there should be another action plan, which is to uh, allow them to uh, resettle in other countries around the world. The world is a big place, uh, so, but there isn't even that. So what happens is that we have the slow death of another uh, refugee community, like so many uh, around the world for 50, 60, 70 years, uh, who just wither away their children wither away and uh, the world just turns a blind eye. Uh, yep. There's some, some reports say that, you know, in the last, uh, since the war on terror that the US launched, so-called war on terror, there have been 37 million uh, refugees uh, as a result of uh, uh, various international policies and conflicts and disasters. And uh, what's happening to them? Uh, you know, this is this is a, a population of a, uh, of a large country, 37 million. So um, we, we need uh, some kind of solution to this problem, either to let people settle elsewhere, uh, go to different parts of the world and take pressure off, or uh, to uh, you know, bring those who are uh, committing genocide and crimes uh, to book and to uh, change the conditions within their countries. Absolutely, but neither, neither of those have. Yeah, you know, Jango, this one brings a tear to the eye. It really does. I'm afraid we have run out of time, gentlemen. Uh, thank you very much indeed for your thoughts and your contribution. Let's thank our guest, Ney San Luin from the Free Rohingya Coalition. He's a coordinator out of Frankfurt. And we also have Jahangir Mohammed, the director at the Center for Muslim Affairs out of Manchester.